Hi everyone, welcome to another online lesson on Surprise SBQ Skill. Before we go in straight into answering, to going through how to answer Surprise SBQ Skill, let's go through some pictures and ask ourselves, ask ourselves whether we are surprised or not surprised. So for example, the first image here is a Kit Kat from Japan but seafood flavour. Are you surprised after seeing this photo? Some of my students would say that um, it's a chocolate, so why is it seafood flavour? It's very surprising because I wouldn't expect a chocolate to be seafood in flavour. So I will have some students saying that they are surprised. However, I will have students who say that uh, duh, it's Japan, they have creative food they have creative food flavours. So because I have I always see Japan doing very weird food combinations, hence I am not surprised. So you realize there are actually two different ways in which you can answer this specific surprise question. One is based on what we expect but something else happened. So the idea of expectation versus reality versus the idea of a prior knowledge that Japanese people are very experimental with their food. Next is this second photo which shows a poster stating COVID-19 school closure. I will have students saying that uh, Miss Rose, it has happened to us before. Remember when school closed because of his? So because it has happened before and we have experienced school closure before, hence I am not surprised. I also have students saying to me in class that, oh, like leading up to school closure, leading up to HBL, it was already happening in other countries. So we kind of expected that it was about time that it will happen in Singapore also. So we were not surprised. So you realize for the first example here, we are not surprised because of prior experience, because of prior knowledge. For the second example where we are not surprised, it's because we are pretty much cross-referencing to whatever that is happening in other countries. So it's similar to cross-referencing to other sources. So what are you essentially looking out for when analyzing a surprise question? To judge if something is surprising, we need to check if whatever is presented in the source is expected or unexpected. If it's expected, you saw it coming, then we'll say that it's not surprising to us. But if it's unexpected, this means that it's surprising to us, we did not expect it to happen, we did not see it coming, hence it's surprising for us. So, why are you not surprised with a source? We are not surprised with a source because it is expected. It's expected because there's an alignment between the content of the source and the provenance. So, for example, the information and provenance always have things like the identity of the source giver. Where is the source being published? So, if let's say the content of the source correlates with what you expect the source giver to say, then we'll say that, oh, I'm not surprised, I already expected it to happen, I already see it coming. Or, we are not surprised because we see it corroborating with other sources. Source A, the, our master source, states X. Another source also states X. So because our master source is corroborated with source X, hence I am not surprised. Why are you then surprised with a source is because it's unexpected. So for example, when reading through a source, we realize that the content has a lot of contradictions and inconsistencies. So because it's a lot of inconsistencies or gaps in information in the source, we will say that we did not expect it is unexpected to us. Or we see a misalignment between content and provenance. For example, when we see the identity of the source giver, we did not expect the person to say a certain thing in the content. So for example, if let's say the provenance is uh, the provenance states that the source giver is from Trump, but the content of Trump's speech is actually singing praises about the Obama administration. Because we didn't because we will definitely not expect Trump to say good things about Obama's rule, about Obama's administration during all Obama's time as the president. There's a, there's a misalignment between content and provenance, hence we are surprised. Or, we are surprised with a source because it does not match expectations of the issue and this is usually based on background information. Hence, we always say this in class, SS teachers always say this in class, 
but before you eagerly jump straight to answering the question and reading the sources or analyzing the sources, always spend three to five minutes reading through the background information because SSSVQ is always decontextualized sources. We do, not know, we do not know the topic, we do not have prior knowledge about the topic, they can test you on anything. So you need to read the background information to really understand the context of the issue. Or, we are not surprised with a source because it corroborates with other sources. This is where we do cross-referencing. So in terms of answering technique, it's very similar. To reliability and utility in the sense that we have content, cross refer, highest level, but don't just do it in a very blind manner. Don't just copy and paste blindly because answering technique wise is the same, but it is a different skill altogether. Your elaboration must talk about why you are surprised or not surprised. Your explanation on your thought processes must be there in your answer. You must show how are you analyzing the source how you are reacting to the source and why did it make you surprised or not surprised. A lot of students always forget to do this part. They will always just say that, oh, I'm surprised by source A because source A states this, this is the evidence, this is the explanation, but they will just end there. Their elaboration will just be a mere elaboration of what source A is talking about, but they always forget to talk about why exactly are they surprised. So always imagine that you're kind of talking out your answer to someone, you're having a very nerdy discussion about the source with your friend, your friend's asking you why you're surprised, you need to really explain your stand or why you're surprised or not surprised. It's like a debate, it's like an argument, you want to win this argument, make sure you answer the question directly. So always state what is surprising and not surprising and elaborate the reason on why the source is surprising or not surprising for you. Show us a thought process. I always say in class, always imagine that the examiner is this super blur person who doesn't know a single thing. Make sure you really describe, elaborate your thought process. Don't expect us to make the links for you. The question may or may not contain an issue, but like what I said just now, you have to read the background information to understand the topic and context. So, the structure is very basic content cross-reference purpose. These are just some examples of how a surprise question will look like. So, for example, the first two example, the first two point form is a the first two point forms are very basic surprise question. The third point form is a bit more scope where they ask you specifically, are you surprised by a specific topic that the source is talking about? While the last question is a surprise question, but they just use a different way of wording the question. So instead of using the word surprise, they use the word shock. Okay, so let's try. The question is, are you surprised by source A? Explain your answer. Very basic surprise question. Remember what I say, before you answer your surprise question, before you start analysing, always read the background information. So now I will give you around, spend some time, just pause the video, read through the background information. You would realise that this background information talks about how, it talks about DOSCON and how Singapore actually raised the DOSCON from yellow to orange and what DOSCON orange essentially means. It means that the disease is severe, it spreads easily from person to person. So basically there's a form of moderate disruption to daily life and how there's a need to be socially responsible. So by reading background information, you can already get a sensing that, okay, for the set of sources I'm looking at for today, I am looking at COVID and DOSCON, the whole DOSCON yellow to orange situation. So once you're done reading the background information, you can move on to the master source. For today's online lesson, this is the master source. It's a photograph of a woman buying many packs of toilet rolls after the announcement of DOSCON Orange. Spend some time to read it. Now, we are going to answer whether or not you're surprised based on content. So to answer the question, you need to say whether you're surprised or not surprised by source A as what is the source talking about, evidence, explanation, and explanation of why you are surprised or not surprised. So in this case, because I really read the background information and I really know this whole DOSCON yellow to orange situation, I know that essentially raising the colour to one level up shows that the whole situation has gotten worse. 
Now I'm pretty much not surprised if let's say people are panicking over how the whole COVID situation has gotten worse. So I'm not surprised at the source shows Singaporeans holding necessities. Well, I'm not surprised. This is where I weave in the information that I have gotten from the background information about how Doscon Orange means that disease is severe. It's natural that people were to panic and find ways to ensure that the disease will not spread to them, which makes this source not surprising. So now, the base, the main point or the base point that this content paragraph is saying is that Singaporeans are holding necessities because people are starting to panic over how the disease is getting worse. That is your main point. So now when you cross refer, you need to find a source that either shows that yes, people are panicking because the whole COVID situation is getting worse or no, people are not panicking. They are pretty much getting it under control. So when you cross refer, ask yourself, is the content aligned to what you see in other sources? Does the source corroborate with other sources? If agreement in cross-referencing means not surprise, if there's a disagreement means that you're surprised. Always remember to state the common criteria clearly. So for example, since we are saying that, oh, source A shows, oh, I'm, I'm not surprised by source A because source A shows people panicking since the COVID situation has worsened. So you need to find other sources that shows, I repeat again, whether yes, people are panicking because the COVID situation has gotten worse or no, people are not panicking over the COVID situation getting worse. That is a common criteria. That is your base point. Find the source now. So for example, I see this source where there's a photo of long queue of people rushing to buy essentials after circuit breaker, which happened um, after the dose, whole dose con yellow to orange situation. Now I will pretty much realize that A, eh, there is an overlap. Source B is supporting source A. So because source B is showing the same idea of how people are panicking over the fact that the whole COVID situation is getting worse, then I would say that I am not surprised as supported by source B, which shows locals rushing to buy items from supermarket. So this suggests the seriousness of the COVID situation and how it made people panic buy items in hopes that it will make them safe against the virus, similar to the situation in source A. Hence, I am not surprised by source A, as source B also shows people reacting to the virus worsening by hoarding necessities. So always make sure that you explain why you're surprised or not surprised and have the last line there to say that, oh, because source A and source B are showing the same idea, hence I am not surprised. So you need to have the ending sentence there so that your cross-referencing paragraph doesn't feel very hanging or very random. Always think about the objective of why you're cross-referencing in the first place. Okay. So at this point, I'll always say to students that the basic expectation is for you to be able to hit content and cross-referencing level. Now, let's move on to the highest level where we examine purpose or tone. I won't exactly state what exactly is the answer per se for this activity based on the two photos that I showed you guys. But what I'm going to do is that for... I'm just going to share some questions or some thought process for you to consider when you're examining surprise or not surprise in terms of purpose or tone for the highest level. So at highest level, if you're surprised, this means that there's certain unexpected behavior or claims by the author. So this is where you'll need to check if it deviates from the norm. If the source, if the source deviates from the norm, then the source is surprising. This is where you need to ask yourself, who is the one talking here? Who is the author? Is this how I would expect him to react, to behave usually and why? If the author is behaving in a source that is unexpected, why is it very surprising to us? What possible consequences will this have for him or her? So this is where you need to highlight how despite the possible, possible negative consequences, the author is still behaving as such and hence makes the source surprising. Now, if you're not surprised at highest level, this means that this is an expected behavior or claim by an author. Now, this is where you'll need to check for biasness. If it is biased and you already expect the author to be biased, then the source is not surprising. But this is where you'll need to explain yourself why you already expected the, the author to be biased. So ask yourself, is the source biased in its claim in terms of the choice of words, the tone or the punctuations used? How did the source giver choose to communicate his or her idea? 
as you only share one viewpoint, are there gaps in the information that is present? Why are you surprised by the why are you not surprised by your biasness or the author? So when you check for purpose, a lot of students always just like to say that, oh, I'm not surprised because the source giver has a purpose. Or they like to just say that, oh, I'm not surprised because the source has the source giver has a hidden agenda. And then they just stop there. But it's not enough for you to just stop at saying that, oh, he has a purpose. Oh, he has a hidden agenda. You must tell me exactly what is the person's agenda? What is the person trying to achieve? So ask yourself, who's the author? What is the motive? What is the audience? What is the outcome? Basically, it's like you're doing inference of purpose. Use the structure that you use to answer inference of purpose to structure your argument for surprise or not surprise at highest level if you're considering to use purpose as a method. At the end of the day, there are different methods that we can teach you on how to answer surprise skill. You can say you're surprised, you can say no, not surprised. At the end of the day, there's no template answer for SBQ. We can just teach you the structure. I always say to students, go for the route that is either the easiest for you or the, go for the route that is that you're the most confident in. Because it's very obvious in an answer. The more confident you are in your answer, the easier it is for you to argue why you're surprised or not surprised by the source. If you're not very sure in your answer, it actually is translated in your answer. So in class, we as teachers can just teach you the method. We can go through different practices to harness your critical thinking skills. But when you're sitting for the paper itself, it's really just you and the source react to the source, interact to the source, answer it directly. Imagine that you're like a lawyer, you're arguing, you want to win this fight, you want to win this case. How do you win this argument? Just write your answer down. That being said, I hope this has been somewhat helpful for students who are revising for surprise skill. Always remember to practice your SBQ skills to strengthen your critical thinking ability. All the best!